Now your forecast first, sponsored by the CI Proud to Go mobile app. When the lights go out, we're still on. Good evening, I'm your local weather authority, Chief Meteorologist Chris Yates. We've had showers coming and going throughout the day and this evening. Temperatures now in the low 60s in areas like Galesburg as well as Peoria. For now, a little break in the rain, but there will be more rain coming in as we head through tomorrow, mainly in the form of some scattered rain showers. Maybe a stray clap of thunder, but temperatures will be dropping throughout the day tomorrow. The warmest it'll be at the moment. You step out of your front door tomorrow morning. We'll be back into the mid 40s by mid afternoon. We won't stop falling there. I'll break down your full forecast and let you know just how cold it'll get over the next couple of days. All that's coming up. WYZZ News at 9 starts now. Tonight at 9, a dispute brewing in McLean County over how to handle its books, why the auditor and treasurer aren't seeing eye to eye. If somebody wants to continue using, we can't make anybody not use. And so how do we reduce the negative impact of drugs on that individual and the community around them? Talking opioids here in central Illinois, how the community is coming together to take on the epidemic. And it's been a difficult season for farmers in central Illinois. An industrial hemp farmer shares his journey. But first, the boy accused of setting a mobile home on fire reportedly knew that relatives were inside. It tops our 9 and 9 tonight. As always, thanks for joining us. I'm Eugene Daniel. And I'm Kimberly Eaton. This week, officials charged Kyle Atwood with five counts of murder and arson. Now his mother, Katie Allwood, is asking for the public's understanding. Everyone is looking at him like he's some kind of monster, but that's not who he is. The victims are all members of Katie's family. Her two other children, Damien and Ariel, her grandmother, Catherine, her fiance, Jason Wall, and her niece, Rose. Katie was also inside at the time and was only able to save herself. I stood at the window and I told my kids I was sorry I couldn't save them. Mommy was right here and I loved them. You know, so at least hopefully they heard that. You know, told Jason I love him, I'll always love him. And then I just, something told me that they're gone. So there was a moment where you could hear them screaming. Yeah. You could hear your fiance. Yeah. And then it ended. I don't know what's worse hearing him scream or when it stopped. Katie says her son had recently been diagnosed with schizophrenia, ADHD, and bipolar disorder, adding he deserves a second chance. Her sister, Samantha, who also lost a child in the fire, says she wants her nephew to face a strict punishment, including juvenile detention and prison. McLean County's bookkeepers are clashing over the county's accounting practices. The auditor and treasurer there disagree about how to count the county's money. Now, this follows a change in the bill pay system dating back to January of last year. Auditor Michelle Anderson says it's inefficient and inaccurate, and that's why other counties in Illinois choose a different method. I just am asking them to input um, accurate financial data, something that we should all want. Uh, myself, the treasurer, the county board, county administrator, and quite honestly, the taxpayers. Um, it's just as easy to put in the correct GL date as it is the incorrect GL date. It, it literally is just a, a date. That's all I'm asking for them to do is put a correct date on. In a statement, Treasurer Rebecca McNeil writes, I, like most, am deeply troubled. Longstanding accounting practices that have been in place for many years and audited with a clean opinion are suddenly being questioned. Next week, the board will vote on whether or not to hire an independent auditor to resolve the conflict. Born and raised in Peoria, Brandy Bryant is officially a Peoria County board member. Bryant was sworn in to replace Rachel Parker, who was appointed to become county clerk. I'm very honored to be serving in this capacity. I don't come with any pre-set agenda or expectations. But I will say I plan to learn as much as I can possibly to learn my responsibilities and my role and duties as a county board member. Bryant was praised by county board members tonight, saying that her roots and passion are obvious within the Peoria community. They were also impressed with how she answered questions within her interview. Now, the ICC graduate has dedicated her life to childhood development and is currently a program director for Peoria Public Schools. 
Social Security recipients will see a small increase on their checks starting next year. The Social Security Administration adding on an extra 1.6 percent a month to reflect cost of living changes. The increase last year was only about half of that amount. Now that is based on inflation, which raises the prices of food, services, and other necessities. Well, one organization is changing the conversation and helping people with addictions commit less self-harm. Treasure Roberts joins us now in the studio to explain Jolt Harm Reduction's primary goal. Treasure. Well, Kimberly Eugene, Jolt is a foundation committed to drug awareness and keeping our community as safe as it can be. It was established by Blake and Tamara Alt after the death of their son, Joshua, who accidentally overdosed from heroin. They hosted an intimate discussion tonight at the Peoria Public Library North Branch. Some who attended have previous personal or family-related experience with opioids. Program director Chris Schaffner says they strive to reduce the harm to people who use drugs. Most people we encounter, when we let them know that we just see them and accept them as they are, uh, they're willing to reach out and ask for help. They're willing to tell us what their needs are. But so often they're met with shame um, and guilt and uh, abuse that they're not willing to be honest or vulnerable with people about the, their struggles so they don't get the help they need. Schaffner adds the stigma surrounding drugs keeps addicts from seeking help, increasing the number of lives lost to overdose. Eugene. Well, thanks, Treasure. Meanwhile, Sesame Street is tackling some pretty grown-up issues in one of its latest episodes. The Muppet Carly explains that she's in foster care because her mom has an addiction. The story is part of the Sesame Street in Communities Project, which provides tips for children facing challenges. In the clip, Carly explains how her mother attends meetings to work through her problems. And it isn't the first time that Sesame Street has addressed tough conversations. It's also talked about things like homelessness and bullying. New tonight, every state except for Alaska has had at least one case of a vaping-related injury. The Center for Disease Control says there have been 1,299 cases total, 26 of those deadly. Most of the injuries occurring in people under 35. The CDC hasn't said what exactly is behind the danger, but most of the reports are linked to THC, which we know is the chemical in marijuana that causes a high. The CDC, the Food and Drug Administration, and several health departments are all trying to pin down a cause for those health issues. Well, it's been a very difficult planting season for many farmers in central Illinois. A lot of that caused by the weather. And for one farmer, that came coupled with a high-risk crop. WYZZ's Matt Sheehan spoke with that farmer who says he's thankful he has anything left to harvest. For David Dekoff, planting his industrial hemp plants has come with some major challenges. When storms rolled through central Illinois at the end of September, Dekoff wasn't sure he was ever going to see the fruits of his labor. We had, uh, they say, around 80 mile an hour straight line winds that came through here. Probably about a three to four mile stretch uh, from east to west, uh, right in this area. But the hemp plants were around eight feet tall and were very heavy. And luckily, they survived the storm. Wind, uh, you know, really, uh, really laid them over, but uh, fortunately, it didn't break them off. Decoff took samples to a lab to ensure his plants contained less than 0.3 percent THC. Now, with the help of several other farmers, it's time to harvest and get the crop ready to distribute. Mitchell Carr has been leading the charge in the field. He says they've been harvesting for two weeks and are just over halfway done. Labor's really intensive. We probably have 600 man hours just in the field alone, and we just keep adding to that day in and day out. On Thursday, a man from LK Pure Labs came by the facility to take samples of some hemp that is nearly ready to sell. After drying out for 10 to 14 days, the product gets tested again to make sure the THC levels are still at the correct spot. Geekoff says he hopes his plant will be able to be sold by this winter. If they meet the federal requirements, he could be selling his product across the country. That's what we hope for because it increases our marketing ability. Uh, that Illinois is really behind as far as finding processors. It's very, very difficult to find processors. And some of those that are out there haven't really been in business very long. In Delavan, Matt Sheehan, WYZZ News. Well, we're going to check in now with our chief meteorologist, Chris Shades. Chris, I know for farmers, they've been tracking the weather as they always do, but it, it was. It has been a very tough season for them. What can they expect as we look into the next week? Yeah, we know we're looking at some very cold temperatures coming in, some of the coldest air of the season, and not everybody is going to see freezing temps, but there's going to be a few spots that make it down to 32. Not tonight, but maybe tomorrow night, and then some patchy frost may remaining a possibility throughout the weekend. 
Uh, high temperatures today, a little bit below where we expected. The cloud cover and the rain did its job and kept temps into the upper 60s. Peoria 67 today. Pontiac was the warm one at 71. For now, the scatters, uh, the scattered showers have moved out. We'll get some more rain pushing in before too long. You'll see more of those showers and isolated storms coming in from the southwest. So we generally expect this activity to lift to the northeast overnight. Heaviest rain more or less will be focused along the Interstate 55 corridor, but until the entire system blows through, Tomorrow, the rain chances will linger, but the big story tomorrow will be our temperatures. Warmest in the morning, 55 degrees. Make sure the kids are bundled up heading off to school. Temperatures will be in the mid 40s for the bus ride home. Now, how low will our temperatures go tomorrow night? I'll have that forecast coming up in just a little bit. Eugene. All right, Chris, coming up, delaying the fight to replace Obamacare. Why the Trump administration wants to hold off on a possible Supreme Court case. Then increasing kids' love for reading. How community members can help students' passion for books grow.